Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 393 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Thursday, May 30th, 2024, and it is a very sunny day here at the Beaver Lodge again, as you can tell by the fact that I am pink yet again and uh, realizing that maybe wearing red, if I'm already going to be pink, maybe wasn't the most camera savvy choice. It's kind of fun. But I mean, it is because I am wearing my maple leaf tennis. It is because. Sorry, I left the mic there. It is because I am wearing my maple leaf tennis <laughs> shirt. So, um, you know, I guess I could be forgiven a little extra pink if I have a maple leaf on my heart. <laughs> sure. See, I could be running for the conservative party right now. <laughs> I wear my constitution um, in my pocket right above my heart. Well, you do have a membership, don't you? No, no, no. I had a one year at Laps. Oh, it was one year. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. And here, interesting thing. You know what? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. You know, I say I'm, I'm getting diverted from my intro here. So remind me to finish thanking the sponsors and stuff mm. to do this. But yes, um, I was a member of the Conservative Party of Canada for one year because uh, if people are here are uh, have arrived more recently to the show, when the Conservative leadership race was going on, I was encouraging people to buy a membership because party politics is where it's at. And if you didn't want to have Pierre Podiev as an option, well, then the best thing to do was to have bought a membership to the leadership race and make sure that he didn't win. Didn't work out that way, but that's where that's where our power actually those, is. Yeah, apparently, so, a lot of those votes were from um, other parts of the world. I'm told <laughs> some uh, allegedly, 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 uh, someone else who is having an election right, right, right now may have mm -hmm. helped with this. Allegedly, allegedly, someone wink. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, but I did buy one for a year because, you know, you, I mean, I was encouraging everybody else to do it. So it would have been kind of awkward if I mm -hmm. didn't do it myself. Right. Somebody asked me, says, well, did you do it? So, well, no, well, you just spent like two months telling us. So, so I did it. I, you know, I, I set my $10 and yes, that means I had to give $10, but I mean, $10 for like the option of vote directly. Listen, Pierre's not in my electoral district, so I don't get to vote for him. So this, I literally got to vote, not him. That was worth $10. Mm. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> no, mm. because some, some wouldn't on principle. 
right? Because I'm not giving ten dollars to that organization. To, you know, it's like okay, just but for me, I thought it was worth it. And you know, if enough people did it, ten dollars to stop them. I mean, I've taken a lot of ten dollars though, <laughs> not just mine. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to blow that up a little bit now. So, so now here's an interesting. This is an interesting use of Canadians' personal data. I bought a one-year membership to the Conservative Party in Canada during the year of the leadership race so that I could vote for the party leader. At no point after the purchase of my membership did I have contact with the party. Once my membership lapsed and after, I have had no contact with the party. I am no longer a member. Today, this was texted to me. Why am I still on the party list if I am no longer a member? So from 613-412-4583... Pierre Polyev lawn sign on a beautiful green lawn in a very suburban neighborhood, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And it says, Get your sign, order your Conservative Party lawn sign today. Douglas, okay. have you ordered your blue Conservative Party election lawn sign yet? The sign at your home shows our momentum. When an election is called, we'll deliver it and set it up. <sighs> Needless to say, I, there there was there, no reply. But I'm, um, yeah, I was like, oh, you, you still have my number, even though I'm not a member anymore, and you still think you now have permission to use it. Oh, that 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 that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, because like the me not volunteering or not responding when you said my membership was up, I guess wasn't interpreted also as I probably don't want to sign because the person I voted for in the race didn't win. And I can't support this one. Mm. Like I really can't support this one. Mm. <laughs> Well, I'm jealous they didn't offer to send me a sign. Well, you know, uh, my last name is earlier on, on the, in the alphabet than yours, so wait a few days. Yeah, <laughs> my, you, might get, you might get the offer, yes. <laughs> they might be doing it in small batches. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. Just a, a, a little interesting tidbit since you mentioned it. Um, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. By the way, I checked on uh, our friends at The Pepper Master, and everything is okay over there for them uh, for good. the tornado hit. So everybody is fine and doing well. So uh, that, uh, that makes us very happy. And Mr. Grizzly, mm -hmm. how's your mental health today? I'm still uh, working towards uh, the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. That's really all I can say. I'm just I'm exhausted today. I didn't sleep well, and uh, I have a very long day ahead of me. We have to. I have to be out of here at eight, eight on the button today. <clears throat> so yeah. All right. I have a very long day ahead of me, and uh, I'm tired. And somehow I got to find the energy to do it. So I think I'll grab a Red Bull on the way in because <laughs> I'm gonna need it. Because coffee is not going to be enough this morning. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, um, I have some news that might make you happy. What's that, sir? Well, your eager beaver was a very eager and busy beaver mm -hmm. over the past few days. And um, I sent a few letters to a few people about uh, our mental health walk. Oh, yes. Yes, because uh, I had a conversation with the office of uh, Senator Brazo mm -hmm. and uh, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person named Demi, Debbie Sims. Mm -hmm. Hi, Debbie, if you're watching, uh, who's been just a delight to work with. And uh, we had, you know, obviously established a bit of a relationship when we had arranged for the interview of the senator. So, right. I mean, this time, you know, we're, it's not a first, a first meeting or first experience working together. And the first one was very positive. So, you know, obviously we're always very happy to chat, to be chatting with each other. Uh, which, uh, so yes, uh, email exchange, uh, led to a phone exchange, which was 
just delightful. And, uh, and then some information sent to us about um, four people with whom their office had been talking to who also um, have a focus on mental health, mm -hmm. some of them particularly men and boys, uh, and some a little bit more broad, um, but uh, put us uh, gave us the contacts of these four people, and I reached out to uh, all four of them, wrote them letters, and uh, heard from one yesterday. Uh, and I'm not going to say who it is yet because I do not necessarily have permission, but okay. I sent out the letter. But uh, you can tell me in the, the chat. I, I could tell you in the chat, yes. Wow, amazing. What do we need to make this happen? Oh, impressive. Cool. So I don't know what it is I put in the letter, but uh, for wow, amazing, what do we need to make this happen? <clears throat> yeah, read the response. Pretty... Um, Yay. And um, I think he will be very happy. Mm. I, this for so it's, it's, it's so grassroots that mm. it's, uh, let's just say, I, I don't think we could have landed better. Okay. I don't so think we gotta, could have landed better. You got to let me in on the secret here. Man. Yes. Yes. I will let you in on the secret. Okay. But, I'm, I'm going to do that when I, when I throw it to you to chat because that's the only way I'll be able to show it to you. Okay. Uh, I'll show it to you on the, um, uh, I'll put it to you on uh, the, the share screen, but just don't share it. I won't share it. You'll yeah. be able to see it. Okay. No All right. Uh, sorry, it gets a little uh, behind the scenes thing, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm showing a lot of leg, uh, but I, I haven't responded to that. I saw that when I woke up first this morning. So um, I, I just, I don't want to start sharing public information about other right. people without their right. consent first. So I'm, I'm not trying to, to be it. I'm not I won't be able to, to see it though. Even if you put, give me to me on the share screen, I won't be able to see it. It just shows up as like a, a tiny little stamp. Okay. Then I'll just forward mm -hmm. it to you then. Yeah. All right. Kids and cubs. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, How about them Edmonton Oilers? Yes. Five up. Yes. Yeah, uh, five. five uh, yeah. Five two five unanswered goals too after going down uh, two zero very very quickly in the first yeah. period. Um, something happened. I don't know what it what happened, but uh, they got fired up last night. So yeah, yeah somebody flipped a switch. Uh, but uh, that's the stuff, man. Ooh, yeah. two two uh, going Seriously, to Edmonton. Yeah. And yes. what I, what is the? I gotta find out. The Rangers, I think, are. Behind right, right now, aren't they? Uh, I to be totally honest, honest, I have not honest. been following that one. I should because my friend Michael loves the Rangers. <laughs> uh, I've been so focused on Edmonton and then, you know, walk that I forgot to follow the is it Panthers and Rangers, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, Panthers and Rangers. So um, I think they're down. It's So game four. I think they're down two games. They lost uh, in overtime. Two. They lost in overtime on the twenty eighth, which yeah, was they're they're tied at two right now. Yeah. Oh, is it two? Series. Yeah. Okay. So they're both both series are tied up. So we're looking at six games minimum then. All right. All right. 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 So yeah, good thing. And uh, so that that's very exciting. The Edmonton Oilers. I, I'm hoping that they do because. It's been a long time since there's been a Canadian team in the final. And yes, Kit Linda, right on time, just is exactly what I was going to say. And how about our first professional women hockey champions? Minnesota makes her story. You heard it here first. Uh, I, did, uh, I didn't get to tune into the game from the beginning, but I did get there somewhere in mid-second period and watched it. It was great. Loved it. Uh, watched the whole uh, ceremony with, uh, with the trophy and... Uh, everybody lifting it up and giving it a kiss and all that good stuff. So uh, it was just, uh, it was just absolutely, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and uh, I think the well, the, the final game five course was a sellout. I think it was just under seven thousand people. And uh, for the entire uh, last series, the five uh, matches together, I think attendance was just about, uh, just about thirty-eight thousand for all five matches. So it's doing well. 
it's uh, it's it's really doing well, especially since it's, you know it was all in the United States, and you know none of the matches were in Canada mm-hmm. in the, the final. So that's uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, excited about the women's basketball team too. I know I hear you, Mashadika. There, there there's something else as well. So um, I was just smiling the entire time. I really was, and you know what? Um, it was a sh- it was a shutout. It was three zero, mm-hmm. and the shots were like forty four to seventeen. Oh wow! So um, <laughs> that's that's uh, that's lopsided ice. <clears throat> yeah, that you know, it was three zero, but she made forty one saves. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> yeah that's, that's that's yeah i know it sounds that's a productive night <laughs> that's the thing it's like it sounds when you throw three nothing oh man uh, 41 saves oh <laughs> and one of them was an empty netter yeah so two goals you know yeah 41 oh my god yeah well it's i watched this I'd movie be tired man i watched this movie not too long ago uh and I, it was about to the american samoa uh, football team and how mm-hmm. they had the most lopsided loss in international play ever 30, yeah. 37 to zil nil 37 nil against Australia 37 or 41. I can't remember. And they're like, Oh, they have 37 goals yet, yeah, but he stopped 97 shots. So <laughs> it's like, Whoa, hang on a second. You made 97 saves. I know they scored on you 37 times, but still 90, 91 or 97, like the save percentage is really, really high when you consider how big the net is, right? To be able to make that many s- stops is yeah. really a, a, an example of, of a very skilled goalkeeper. Because that's a big net to cover, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. So, yeah, oh, my word. There's, she worked hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they kept her very busy. Uh, but, yeah, it was a, it was a, the part to... The period and a half that I saw was absolutely fantastic, and uh, I'm. Uh, it looks like uh, it's. It looks like the the financial footing is going to be solid for next for the next year to keep uh, to keep growing, and if uh, all the players remain um, focused on the goal of getting a league, you know, uh, firmly rooted, and it seems that they are just by the way that they did their collective agreement and all that kind of stuff. Um, this league is going somewhere. It really is. Mm. And um, speaking of women's sports, uh, since we're talking about them, um, also announced recently for Canada is a professional women's soccer league. Yes, that's and and of course uh, there's a WNBA team coming to to Toronto as well. So I was like, yes, it's it's an explosion of of women's professional sports, which is, I think, a, a very pleasant thing to be able to say. Mm-hmm. So I believe that it's called Project Eight, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they had Diane Matheson who's the CEO and the co-founder and, of course, a two-time Olympic bronze medalist for Team Canada. Uh, They had a press conference saying that the new name of uh, Project 8 will be called the Northern Super League, which is set to begin its season in the spring of 2025. It will make its debut in six founding clubs from key markets across the country. Ottawa and Montreal were the two latest to be added joining previously announced clubs in Halifax, Toronto, Calgary, and Vancouver. And the fact that Halifax is finally getting a professional sports team makes me happy. Very. Very happy. Very happy. We are thrilled to announce this update to soccer fans across Canada as we take a big step towards our season opener in April 2025, Matheson said. After years without a professional women's domestic soccer league, the Northern Super League and its six founding clubs will fill a significant void in Canada and Is bring about meaningful change coast to coast. Diana Matheson? Yes. Yes, I met her. Oh, yes, I'm, that's uh, why I was wondering you didn't react the first time yeah. when I said it. Yeah, I met her. She's a uh, lovely... Uh, and she she basically scored the medal, the, the goal in the London Olympics that secured the bronze medal for Canada. Mm-hmm. So she's... Uh, little on the heroic side as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. 
Each of the six clubs will be independently owned and operated. The Northern Super League will feature a 25-game regular season schedule, followed by playoffs and a national championship next fall. Quote, we are proud to launch with a name that will instill pride in all those who play and love the game. With a brand that is fresh, we welcome all who want to be a part of this exciting moment in Canadian sports history, said Matheson. Further announcements regarding league executives, player signings, and detailed scheduling are expected in the weeks ahead. Inspiration for the league's brand comes from the vibrant Aurora Borealis, which influences the color palette while the dynamic serpentine style font reflects team synergy on the field. The emblem's four-pointed North Star symbolizes the league's strength, vision, and commitment to establishing itself as a guiding light in the realm of sports in Canada and beyond. And I will uh, put it up here for you to see, Mr. Grizzly. Canada's newest for women's professional soccer league will be called Northern Soccer League, and this is the logo. Cool. Northern Super League. I like it. Very cool. The NSL. Ba, 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 ba. Well, I mean, it's a play on the old NASL, North American Soccer League, NSL, NHL, sort of blending it all together, right? NFL. NFL. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, it's, 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 it's sort of a, a subliminal way to, to trick you. Yeah. But it will not trick you, but you know, it's just, it's a familiarity. By so yes, exactly. Association is what I'm trying to say. Yes, exactly. Nobody's trying to be tricked. It's just a, it's a play on words that will make you, it rings familiar. So yes. And, and NSL also, you know, this Northern Super League, but if people start calling it, you know, you know, the National Soccer League, it still applies. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I just wanted uh, to uh, just wanted to run this by you. I, th I threw it in the feed there real quickly because I check once in a blue moon to see where we're sitting on Feedspot for 40 Best Canadian Politics Podcasts. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, because I haven't checked it in a while because, you know, kind of a busy fella. So I put it on the screen here. And uh, well, let's see here. Where are we now? Okay, 40 Best Canadian Politics Podcast number one, Power in Politics. Yeah. Yeah. It's to be expected. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. October 2020. Uh, let's see. Move, move down here. The Bridge with Peter Mansbridge. No surprise yeah. there. I mean, come no surprise. On. He's great, and he does a frequency one episode per day. And then look who's sitting there at number three still. We're back at three. Yeah, back at three. Yeah, Yay, we're, we're ahead of last time, news at issue. <laughs> yay! Because like we were at three, and then the last time I saw one, we had went back down to four, and now we're back at three again. Yeah, we just got to get uh, like feed spot for him. Okay, so uh, it just says frequency two episodes per week because this is the audio only version of the podcast that they're talking about. And that's even though we do a show every day, they don't get posted every day for the audio version. And that is where that rating falls. But I went to look at the because um, uh, we saw that last time as well. Uh, and I went back to the very first one when they were still coming out uh all the uh, on daily and yeah they was still saying that so i don't know what it, what it is um it's it, it might just be something that's uh a little bit of incorrect information but that's okay that's fine that's right it's the, we're number three again i'll I, take it again don't know how we're doing it because like we i literally just called him up one day and said hey want to make a podcast <laughs> i didn't didn't even here we know, are. Didn't even really know him, but uh, it turns out to be a wonderful thing. And uh, of course, I mean that's you guys, right, kids? Right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you guys doing it for us. I mean, yes. Uh, just, Kip uh, Jim says just an what, old hack that that has a a deep voice and a microphone. Yeah, Kid Jim says what needs to happen to get this going audio daily. Um, it, I have to catch up on things. I, I just had uh, over. Yeah, don't don't know this one. It's me. Uh, I you know with the three shows happening at the same time, and then I fell sick for two weeks, and I'm still trying to catch up. Basically, so I'm. Uh, yeah, this I'm uh, now. Uh, I think seven shows behind, and uh, hopefully, but I mean, I was eleven shows mm -hmm. behind at the beginning of the week so uh, i am catching up like slowly but surely but i'm eating the elephant one bite at a time so <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> all right mr grizzly uh i'm now able to send you uh the thing and uh it'll give you a little idea of uh what it is where are you sending it uh, i sent it to, uh, to your email okay cool yes. and cool. Uh, yeah it just showed this, up on my phone there yeah if you get a 
reaction at it, whatever there, just let me know. <laughs> All right. Now moving to other stuff Holy going shit. on here. Pardon? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? It, was, it was like, uh, um, wow. Uh, I didn't, yeah. I don't, I don't know this person, but the, the organization I'm familiar with. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, and no yeah, it's I, it's not it's not a member of parliament okay just just, just no 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 no, no 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 it, it's an organization um and it's yeah. an organization that does really good works and is right in line with what we're trying to do well we're, we're right in line with that you know what i mean we're simpatico yes exactly we fit yes we we yes. fit like this De De debbie did not steer us wrong no, no, that's no. all I will say. No, she did not. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, well, let, let's do it here. Um, it's not about Canada, of course, the United States, because it's probably the big political story right yeah. now. Um, the jury is now deliberating. So, uh, yes, in Ronald Rump Roast, uh, the first of what we hope will be for criminal trials, you know, whether the, the other three happen, kind of decide on how people vote. So, um, oh, I see Mr. Grizzly is frozen. I do not know. Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay, good. So, this week, um, they came in and they had summations or what's closing arguments on the Tuesday. Uh, Monday was a holiday in uh, the United States, was Memorial Day. Um, and those, and they went on for about, uh, seven, eight hours. Um, the jury, I think everybody decided that even though it was going to take a long time, uh, they wanted all of the summations to be done on the same day rather than taking a break and finish. So they put in a little extra time on that day. Mm -hmm. Um, then they came in on, uh, Wednesday for final instructions. The jury cons consists of seven men and five women. And uh, Judge Brashan instructed them that a defendant can be held, held liable through the criminal for the criminal acts of another person if the defendant basically asked or instructed or helped them to do so and did so intentionally. Because uh, one of the defense's main uh, arguments, other than, well, Michael Cohen's a liar and you can't trust him, but I mean, you know, there are criminal cases all the time, mob cases, other cases where, you know, the witnesses or to a crime that are there are, are also, you know, criminals and unreliable. And we have processes with this, you know, to go through that, to vet information, you have corroboration. So, I mean, it wouldn't be the first trial in history where someone who doesn't have the most stellar reputation in the world is testifying against someone who also doesn't have the most stellar reputation in the world. Um, so, but the other part of their defense was, well, Donald Trump didn't have anything to do with the production of these documents, these forged documents. Well, it's like, well, you know, so all he did was sign them. Well, yeah. But I mean, if what Michael Cohen has been saying is that they were done at the order of and for the benefit of Donald J. Trump, the, the fact that Donald J. Trump didn't sit down at the computer and type the note out himself doesn't really matter. <laughs> right? So th that's what the judge, but they had to make that, had to make the, that instruction is that, it, not that it is, but like this can be held liable. So you can't rule that out. Right? Um, the other thing that the, the judge instructed is because the falsification of documents charge is a misdemeanor on its own. It becomes a felony when it is used to conceal or commit another crime. In this case, it could be one of three crimes. It could be the falsification of tax records, mm -hmm. violating electoral law, finance law, by making a contribution that was way too much, yes. and then falsify, falsification of other business documents. So he wrote it, he declared it as a legal expense when it was not. He declared it on his taxes, which was falsification of taxes. And then, you know, 
it was a hundred and thirty thousand dollar contribution to his campaign, and then of course there was a little more. So if you add that, which is illegal for one person to make, so he violated three laws. So the judge instructed that for each one of the thirty four counts, this you have to decide if he has violated one of these other laws. Now, you don't have to all be unanimous that he could, for you can decide it was the electoral law you think he voted, he violated or the other one. And it only has to be one of the three, not all three. So for any of the jurors, they could pick any one of the three and they don't have to be unanimous on the three to get to the point of whether or not it's a felony. But they all have to be unanimous on whether or not he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm. So they got two levels. Because is it an actual felony? Like, like this, was this done to conceal, uh, conceal or, or commit another crime? And which one of the three? Did he do it for at least one of these three for mm-hmm. you? Yes. Okay. Now, beyond a reasonable doubt. So these two tests. So, um, so the, and they had like a, a whole uh, conference, uh, by the side, uh, you know, on Tuesday of last week, where where the both sides argued all of those things about what the instructions that the judge should be given. Now the judge has free reign to give whatever, but you know he takes, you know, considers what's going on, and then and the judge will will do what the judge will do with that one. But it's an opportunity to just clear out some things if the you know people have some concerns, and you can find a way to smooth some things over because a lot of people sometimes try to say, well, you can't ask the people to consider that. It's like, uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> right yeah you had one of the trump's one of trump's witnesses robert costello actually was actually on the stand at one point and he himself was a lawyer and when he was like doing all this stuff like talking back to the judge and giving him side eye and staring him down the judge had to clear because at one point the judge told him that you know he should remove some remarks or what not like this or, or did you just say that and then mm-hmm. the guy just turned around and looked at the stenographer and says strike that it was like the judge is going dude it's my courtroom i tell the stenographer when to strike you, you what, don't who the hell do you think you are yeah so this guy was on the stand basically behaving as trump would if he would on the stand performing for an audience of one I don't know. And he's a lawyer, so I don't know if he's going to have any like consequences because it's like the judge literally, he cleared the courtroom first. Mm-hmm. The, he, no, cleared the jury away, but media and everyone was there. And then he cleared the courtroom. Oh. Totally. Like this is like, are you staring me down right now? <laughs> You're not going to get away with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just... Y'all, y'all barking up the wrong tree on that one, I think. Um, oh, my word. He's trying to intimidate him, basically. He's, he's using a Trump mob boss tactic, if you will, you know? Right. I'll just and that intimidate wasn't, him. I know. And that wasn't the first thing. The other thing that he did, uh, Trump, over the, the course of this whole thing, is um, he had the gag order. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't allowed to say things. So, uh, he said well, stuff anyway, cause he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't. Oh yes. Anybody. He said stuff like this. I mean, he got 10 charges of contempt. Yeah. He didn't listen <laughs> to anybody. He never right. has. To, he never will. But at the beginning, nobody was coming mm-hmm. to his thing. And then one day he got mad through a little tantrum. Well, Trumpy then, didn't, didn't like what he wasn't, uh, didn't like well, that he it, wasn't getting the audience he wanted. He didn't get the protests. He wasn't getting the support, right? And the court mm-hmm. case wasn't going well, clearly. So he got mad and he so he stomped his little foot. Yes. And then there was a trick, all right. Rick Scott, you know, governor, former governor of Florida or senator for Florida or something like that. He went and then a couple of years ago. No, he's, he was Florida. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of another Rick Scott. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you put this image up, uh, Mr. Grizzly. And then eventually, Remember when we showed that clip the other day of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jasmine Crockett arguing? Mm-hmm. That meeting was supposed to happen earlier in the day, but it got delayed because a lot of them were in uh, New York City doing this. Right. Yeah, they're all Literally yeah. a rogues gallery. Mm-hmm. Cocaine bear. 
Yeah, that, that guy has problems, man. Now, all of them showed up in the blue suit. And there are other ones where they're all, they're all have a, a shade of a red tie. Mm -hmm. They all showed up as mini Donald Trumps. Mm -hmm. And this guy here, Bob Good. Who is that? He's a guy who was trying to, he's the, he's the chair of the Freedom Caucus, mm -hmm. was trying to get Trump's endorsement, but wasn't all in on him at first and then sort of turned at the, at the last minute and said, I'm all for Trump. Oh, yeah. Trump didn't give him his endorsement. Showed up like a good little soldier. That didn't work out for him. <laughs> nope. Uh, Made an endorsement for the challenger. Wow. Yep. Trump said well, McGuire, <clears throat> John McGuire, has my complete and total endorsement, MAGA 2024. He said, said something that... that uh, Good was constantly attacking and fighting him until recently when he gave him a warm and loving endorsement, but really it was too late. The damage had been done. Mm. <laughs> oh, man, 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 man. So uh, it's uh, each one of his charges carries a maximum of four years and a $5,000 penalty. It's not clear. A lot of people say whether or not he would be incarcerated or whether or not if he was found guilty, he would be sentenced to probation or house arrest. Of course, he's probably going to appeal it the second it happens to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Uh, however, um, and this is just pure speculation on my part, but Michael Cohen did go to jail. Yes, he did. He did time. He did go to jail. And if one does buy that these crimes were committed at the direction of and for the benefit of Donald J. Trump, it would be rather illogical for Mr. Trump to be sentenced, to not be sentenced for incarceration and for longer. I mean, he was the person who got all these people to do all these things mm -hmm. so that he can keep his hands clean. It's all just... Um, if the guy who typed up the papers go to jail, shouldn't the guy that said, hey, you type up the papers, go to jail? Especially if throughout the entire process he's shown such contempt that he's got 10 contempt charges going on with it and a judge that looked at him and said, I will put you in jail. <laughs> And who brought a witness onto the stand who rolled his eyes at him and oh, mm -hmm. so much so that he had to clear the court. Yeah, it's, it's, he's, he's just trying to make a mockery of the justice system. And also said things about his daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, have you noticed, though, that Ivanka has, has never come to be by his side in the courtroom? Mm -hmm. she's shied away from the spotlight in the media now all of a sudden wonder what yeah. that wonder why that is wonder why that is might, might it have to do with something with chinese companies giving her licensing on you know there's a whole bunch of nastiness in there <clears throat> yeah yeah absolutely and uh was it it was eric <clears throat> trump I think it was he was on the on TV and you know standing in front of the mics and saying like this like I'm, I'm proud to have stood by my father blah 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 in the freezing cold courtroom <laughs> hearing people say bad things about him <laughs> With a corrupt judge. It's like, it's like, fuck, really? Mm -hmm. I was proud to be on my side every single day. It's like, like yeah. dude, it's like your father would cut you. <laughs> like, I mean, just you, you, you get faster. tossed under the bus quickly. The only oh one he God. won't toss under the bus is Ivanka because he wants to date her. Yeah, I think he still thinks he has a chance. <laughs> that is so icky. I, I can't even. 
He said I, that on, on, was it The View? Was he on The View or, or a national talk show he was on? And he said, if yeah. she wasn't my daughter, I'd be dating her. I'm like, um, please keep her away from him. <laughs> That is right? so greasy, man. Like, uh, and you know, Stormy Daniels testified that you know before whatever happened, uh, he told her that he reminded her of his daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Before he is, violated her. <clears throat> yes. Well, I would remind me. You remind me of my daughter. Now let's have the relations. <laughs> Yeah. That is not healthy. It's that, not that, healthy. That is not, it's not healthy. Not at all. That's there bad in every possible imaginable way. Here it is, Mr. Grizzly. This is the, the one I just like. I'm sitting there and I'm just like listening to this guy. I'm going, the, 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 such a performance for the audience of one. Mm. Eric Trump. Okay, let's see. I'll just cue this up. Sure, we've got some volume, volume. There we go. We got some volume. Open the volume, eh? I shall open, open the, the volume. volume. Maybe they're there. I'm just proud of the toughest person I've ever met in my entire life for having the backbone and fortitude to go through this whole mess as uncomfortable as it's been. And I'm proud to have stood there every single second by his side in that freezing cold courtroom against unthinkable odds and a corrupt judge and people making a lot of money, and this political witch hunt. Uh, he's an inspiration to me every single day, and he'll be vindicated. Thank you very much. I'm just proud of the toughest person. <sighs> Your dad probably thinks you're a sucker, babe, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. have you heard what he said about the vets? Just... <laughs> I mean, it's just... I stood by his side, and I was like... You're still not going to get more than your brother in the will. Just <sighs> pipe down. All this performative. Oh, my God. Anyway, so <clears throat> it seems that uh, the jury deliberated for four hours yesterday after they got all the instructions. They had asked to see uh, more, uh, hear the testimony of Michael Cohen and uh, David Pecker about uh, the Michael Cohen about the night that uh, in 2015 where they all had the meeting where they mm -hmm. kind of agreed that they were going to do this and uh, get uh, some clarification on uh, some of the judge's instructions. So um, it could either come by fast, and a lot of people are saying that if it takes a longer time, then maybe it's because he has a better chance of being acquitted. However, this might be also a case. It seems that by all reports, the jury had been super intent attentive throughout the entire case, uh, and that it could just be that the jury is um, so well aware of the historic significance of this case that they won't want to make sure that they are super extra duper careful and that they've yeah. considered absolutely everything before they release their verdict. So in this, the eyes, right? yeah. So in this case, uh, it taking a long time may not necessarily be uh, a sign. And yes, Toronto, Kit Toronto Dan, I did say David Pecker. That is actually literal is his name. Yeah, and his even name. when I'm using text to type and I'm saying David Pecker, it actually We're all puts, laughing. It, it puts six it puts six stars <laughs> instead of writing Pecker for me. Because <laughs> yeah. because we're twelve year old boys inside. <laughs> it also did it with Dyke. There was really? something about a flood and it did it with Dyke oh, as well. So it confused so like it for a, a, a slur. both both his name and that term which is something that blocks water we're confused for common vernacular slurs yes <sighs> that, that, that's where my text to type goes first well so my i text tried to, type's to write got a dirty mind <laughs> I, I, I wrote a message yesterday i wrote something to somebody and i realized i had a typo so i responded i said something equals the proper word and then i put ducking autocorrect and autocorrect corrected ducking to something else I wanted it to say ducking autocorrect because that's funny. Yes. Like there's the joke, right? Yes. No, it, it autocorrected it to the other word. Yes. <laughs> For me, I was joking with someone. I says, I love you. Love you. Mean it. Running ducking like this. And the very first time I autocorrect, we put changed ducking to the other one. 
I was like kind of proud of it for a second. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> you remembered, but no, no, this time I really mean ducking. <laughs> Oh, jeez, jeez, jeez. Um, very briefly, since we have to go, um, there's that whole um, news exploding with uh, about uh, David Parker. Um, if you haven't listened to it yet, um, Kit James uh, on his Black Bolt had a uh, um, an yeah, episode I I with... Started to, I started to watch it. I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet. I've been so busy. Yes, with David Parker and Marco Hugenboss. Um, uh, Mark and Hugenboss uh, was not what I expected. David Wallace. David Wallace, sorry. Uh, yes, about David Parker. Yes. Uh, David Wallace and Marco Hugenboss. Marco Hugenboss was not what I expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to. I have to. I have to say. Now, clearly, we don't have the same beliefs on certain things like this. But he was not what I was. But we do. We do seem to have certain beliefs on other things. Mm-hmm. He believes that there are certain things that shouldn't be done, and you know, there's. So, um, but yeah, not what I was expected. No, not loud. Not boisterous. Not. Uh, so, um, you know, and I actually found that that the uh, conversation was very, very informative. Uh, I learned a lot about Take Back Alberta mm-hmm. uh, that I did not know, and. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I recommend good job, watching it. I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet because I was really busy yesterday. But yeah. if you have a chance to to give it a watch, check out uh, the latest Black Bolt. It was but, it was informative. But sure. it really does look like we might be we we, we we look we might be at the end of David Parker as we know him right now. But I know that he's also looking uh, to do a take back Ontario. And uh, there was a guy from uh, BC who was running in a nomination who pulled out, and I saw David Parker immediately reach out to him. And go, hey, you know, like this, being a politician is overrated. Why don't you want to be, well, try being an organizer? If you're interested, call me. Like this, so he's trying to reach his tentacle. So either I would say we might be seeing the end of David Parker, and we might be because there's some stuff with Elections Alberta and all that kind of stuff. But um, I've seen enough horror movies in my lifetime to know that Freddie Jason and Michael come back, pop up somewhere for one last scare. So, um, you know. Uh, word on the tweet is that he's fled Alberta. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. So maybe there was a reason he was trying to build some stuff in Ontario and BC. It could could very well be. Yeah. yeah. Don't know. Well, he's burning all his bridges fast. So <laughs> yeah, but uh, pay attention to it. It's uh, it's really, 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 really uh, informative. All right. Do we have a show, Mr. Weasley? We do indeed. I, I have a quick clip I want to show you from, I think this was, was it yesterday? Yes, mm-hmm. this was from yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this. Oh, hello, Lola. She's just sneaking in under the door. Like, say hi. <laughs> she stuck her head in. Hey, Lola. I don't know if you've seen this or not. This is from the House of Commons. And we'll just, just, just give this a watch. And it's one minute and 22 seconds. Just watch. Mm. He's announcing a catalog, everybody. Hey, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Come on, give him a round of applause. You can't afford a home. You might end up in a tent. Your rent is doubled. But hey, you've got a brand new catalog. Mr. Speaker, the question was, will he build 550,000 new homes, yes or no? Prime Minister. He, he mentioned the history lesson. Well, if he was housing minister, he should have known that the way we solved the housing crisis after World War II was by putting forward a catalog of homes that builders could access to build extremely rapidly right across the country. So, yes, that's one of the measures we're bringing back. And his mockery of concrete initiatives that are going to deliver for Canadians is exactly what's wrong with his approach. He'd rather mock and insult than actually roll up his sleeves and get solutions built for Canadians. Order. The Honourable Member from Hmm. Just such a child. Exactly. Like mockery. Such a petulant little child. Just, ugh. Well, 
good news on that one front, uh, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, just uh, Abacus Polling uh, has been doing some data stuff, and um, mm -hmm. recently um, it showed that in the last month, that the gap has closed uh, by five points from their previous mm -hmm. poll. So it still puts conservatives at plus 16, but that's the best result that they've had since January. Mm -hmm. uh, and among Canadians 18 to 29, you know, when I said they hinted that things were changing, uh, they had a 23 point lead yeah. and they blew almost all of it I in one that. month. I saw that. Yeah. There's something going on. The changing, so the changing of the messaging and them going all in with Israel and stuff like it, it's changing. They're, they're, by chasing the nanosecond, they are now starting to have contradictory positions and they are losing some of the bases that they have started to build. And there's still 15, 16 months to go. I told you time was not his friend. Well, and so we just saw his little antics about he's giving you a catalog. Um, was it not one of those post-war post -war catalog homes that he mocked and called a shack? Mm -hmm. Why, yes. Yes, it was. Yes. I probably live in one. Yeah. Yeah, yours is post-war, isn't it? Yeah, mine is a strawberry box. Maybe it was in a catalog. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Right? There were right. certain designs that they had that were done, uh, built very rapidly, built very well, but built, built very affordably in time to get people into homes as quickly as possible. So, yeah, it's just, anyway. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Sharon is caring. Word of mouth is priceless. So tell your peeps and poops all about us. And if you don't want to miss an episode, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Girl who sponsors our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true North Eager Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And I'm sure Mr. Grizzly will make the QR code appear at one point. And if you go there and click subscribe, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it will come directly to you as well. Make like Kit Lane and go to the True North Eager Beaver YouTube page and click all our buttons, like, share, subscribe, lick them, click them. Yay, we love it when you flick them. <laughs> and uh, yes, help us to get to a thousand before Canada Day. That's our goal. So, uh, Thank you so much for everybody who is doing that. And if you want to, you can leave us a comment there too if you like the show. Or, for example, if you'd like to help us in other ways, the QR code that's by Mr. Grizzly's head, that brings you to our coffee page where you can find our tip jar if you like what we do and you think it has some value and you happen to have a couple of coins jingling in your pocket that are just weighing you down. Well, you know, we like to help. So if you just go on over there, coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver and drop a few coins in there. Uh, let us know that uh, you like what we do and you want to encourage us to do more. Uh, we're always very grateful for all the support, but mm -hmm. the support we cherish most is the gift of your attention and your interactions in the chat and sending stuff to us. So we'd like to hear from you. True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com is our email address. You can find us at True Eager on Twitter or our Facebook page, True North Eager Beaver. We try to read everything. So uh, thank you very much for all those who send in some comments. We really appreciate that you do. Or send us uh, ideas and suggestions for stories. That too is very good because democracy is something that you do. If you live in Alberta, please get involved in the NDP leadership race. If you live in British Columbia, if you live in New Brunswick, or if you live in Saskatchewan, why not uh, look into what you can do to help with the upcoming provincial elections? All right. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, it's a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourselves. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Uh, you know, it is a tough world out there. There's no no questioning that. And I know that we're, we're as I've said in the past, inundated with bad news daily about bad things happening to people who are completely, for the most part, innocent in what is taking place. So try and show a little extra bit of kindness towards a stranger today if you could, because we could all use a little bit of extra kindness. And that's about, that's about all I've got to say today. I like that very much. Mr. Grizzly, please, cue the cock. 
You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right, get some Cubs. You have a wonderful day. I'm going to watch some tennis right now because Denis Shapovalov and Felix Ogier-Leysim are both on the courts at the same time and their matches are tied one set apiece. Cool. All right. I'm going to go earn a living. I'll see you later. <laughs> I-